So <laughs> what I'm going to show you is uh, basically a PDF conversion uh, extension I built uh, using SharePoint Framework list extensions. So who doesn't love PDFs? Um, and before we start, I can say, so this is the repo for Puzzlepart, where, where I work. So I'm the CTO of Puzzlepart. Puzzlepart is a consultant company working with Office 365 and SharePoint. And we do a lot of SharePoint framework stuff. And right now, we have a bunch of solutions, which is shared for free here in our Puzzlepart GitHub. Uh, but we're in the process of actually moving this over to the PMP repository when I have the time. So the one extension I'm going into this time is the PDF export. So here's the readme file, how to install it, etc. So it's a global extension. So uh, this actually started out as a hackathon project at ESPC, not last year, but the year before. Uh, then I ended up creating a solution which used Flow and some Azure functions because the APIs weren't there. But now the APIs are there. So I understand there was a demo with PDF conversion a couple of weeks ago as well. Uh, this call, is that true? Which I think used Azure functions. Yeah, that used Azure the, functions, yeah. yes, indeed, mm. yes. Yes. From Anoop yep. a few weeks ago, from Anoop. Yeah, yeah. So let's we'll just test this first. So if I click my document, uh, docx file here, you see I get uh, an extension up here, so download as PDF or save as PDF. If I click two files, then it's easier to find. So basically two options, either save as PDF, which will convert each document to PDF in the same library, or download as PDF, which will download as a zip file using zip.js if there is multiple files, or just one file if, or, or as a PDF file if you just pick one. So. If I click these two files, do save as PDF, processing file number one, file number two. And if we go back to the library, we now have a couple of PDFs here as well. So, so fairly easy, easy stuff. So, uh, What's happening behind the scenes is uh, actually I'm using a function called render list as data stream, which is somewhat documented and somewhat not. Uh, I know Elio has a post on it. There's some other posts as well. So basically, if you pass in this option here, render list data uh, enable media TA URLs. I don't know what TA stands for. Uh, maybe something smart you actually get back a payload for um, for the item with looking like this. Right. So, so this is, so there's a URL with these placeholders in it. Uh, and then you also get the actual value you need to replace, uh, which I do down here. So, so basically you get a URL you can then call and then get the PDF for that file, which is com uh, converted behind the scenes. Um, so when I click each of the documents over here, I pass in the ID and then I, uh, then I use uh, camel query to generate this payload for each um, file. So if we scroll up, let's see if we can find the right call. Um, there, there's so many calls. This one, look at the response. Uh, Oh, it's nice to, so here's media service data and the URL. Basically, you can just look look at this nice JSON file and you figure out what, what, what you actually need, but it's, everything's in this big payload. Let's, yep. So here you see the actual, these, uh, the, uh, the different placeholders here. Right. Um, and then for the, so that means for each item, I, I get the PDF URL. Uh, and in order to create the the PDF item, so, so what I do, since I want to keep the metadata, you see, so I also keep, keep all the metadata here. Uh, so I figured the easiest approach to do this is basically you, so I take the original URL, rename the extension to .pdf, and then I first copy the file. Uh, Basically, so I take, for example, the, uh, the docx file, just copy it, and just call it PDF. 
because uh, you're saying the copy to method will keep all the metadata in whatever columns you have. And then I then I load the, the blob data uh, for the PDF, and then I just set the PDF data into the file afterwards. So that's sort of a hackish way of, instead of creating a new file and copy every column and, and caring about how many columns you have, the, so then you just you just get the data. It's sort of a nice way of doing that. So that's a smart uh, smart trick. Um, I figured I'd show some other stuff as well. Um, so you see I have these nice icons up here. Uh, and these are actually SVG icons. So if uh, if you look at my, um, uh, my manifest, so this points to just root export as SVG and root uh, save as SVG. So those are, are, the, are the icons. So, so let's see, let's see if we do inspect. Uh, and you see this actually now points to the public CDN, whatever this web part is being served from. But you have no idea what the, the URL is. And if you haven't enabled CDN, then the, then the path would be different. So the thing is, if you just point to root here, and if you modify your gulp file a little bit, uh, so see I have a small task here called copy icons. Uh, so it's basically a copy task, which takes all the SVG files and copies them to the temp deploy folder. Because uh, when you build your Shepard framework web part, what, I, what happens is all the files in temp deploy is actually the files being added into the uh, app package, which is being built. So by adding a task like this and just copy the files you need, you can actually reference files from the root of your um, Oh, wherever the web part is being served from. If it's a global app catalog, a local app catalog, or through the CDN, then the path will actually be, be correct. So that's a, also a small trick to, go, to get your icons. I mean, it doesn't have to be SVG files, could be PNG. Um, because, uh, so the other option would be if you could do like a data URL here, but that's not supported for SVGs yet. So that's, this is sort of my workaround for doing that. Um, and then I think I have uh, yeah I have the puzzle part logo in there, which is also loaded here. And then that's fairly easy to get in if you just do just do a require, and that will be bundled correctly. Uh, I think I have my require here, and that makes sure. So this file is actually being bundled the same thing. So inst instead of doing the gulp task, I could actually so if I just added statements like this, just uh, let Icon one, and then uh, just use require. That will also move the file into the temp deploy folder. I guess that's what I wanted to show. And I'll paste the URL to the repo. Oh, someone already pasted the, the repo. Nice. Yeah, the sample. Yeah. 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 Excellent stuff as well. Excellent stuff. Really. Good.